Hi, my name is Sarah and my channel is Naughty Gnome Crafts. Welcome! My channel is all about sewing and styling a handmade wardrobe. Today's video is going to be another Me Made May challenge, but this one's going to be a little bit different than the others that I've done so far. Today is going to be a plans video and we're going to talk about filling the gaps in my wardrobe. I've been reflecting a lot over the month of the things that I need for my wardrobe that I don't currently have. And not to get too much into the details because I don't want to rehash it over and over, but for anyone who is new, I am in my 40s and I've been experiencing some body changes as I've aged. And a lot of my uh, separates, my bottom half skirts, pants, shorts, that kind of thing, they don't fit me very well anymore. A lot of things that I have, um, I just did a wardrobe clean out, switch out for the season, and I had to actually get rid of quite a few of my bottoms because they just don't fit me anymore. I really want to focus on adding some pieces to my wardrobe that are comfortable and that fit my lifestyle currently. For the summer months, I received word from my job that we're gonna be working from home three days a week and going to the office two days, which means that I'm gonna be at home more. And where I live here in Western New York, um, I live in a 100-year-old house and we do not have central air conditioning, um, mainly because it doesn't really, it's not hot enough of the time to warrant it and it's bad for the environment and all that. Um, so we don't have central air. But that doesn't mean I'm gonna be home sometimes when it's really hot, and so staying comfortable and cool is also really high on my priority list. So I have gone through my stash and gone through my patterns and made some plans of pieces that I really want to make um, that will help fill those criteria for this summer. And I'm just gonna go over them with you. So let's get started. First, let's talk about pants. I have recently acquired some new look patterns. I just went to Joann's yesterday and picked up some patterns that I had my eye on. And the first one that I got was new look 6644. This is a wardrobe pattern. It has a V-neck sweatshirt, which I actually really like. But what I'm gonna focus on is the pants. So I bought this pattern because it has cargo pockets and cargo pants are really in for summer. I have been wanting to make myself a pair of linen jogger style pants forever, basically. I purchased this washed olive linen from Style Maker Fabrics last year, I think, and I haven't used it yet. I just think it's going to be the perfect weight and drape for a pair of woven joggers. And I think I'm going to make the view that I'm definitely going to make the view that has the elastic at the cuffs and I'm probably gonna put the back pockets on. Um, I just want this to be a very like utilitarian type of pant, and this color is a neutral for me. It will go for it with so many things in my wardrobe. So that is the first pair of pants that I wanna make. So the second pair of pants is a little bit dressier and more office appropriate, but still comfortable. I purchased the Paper Cut Patterns Geese Pants. Now this might be pronounced guys pants, but I don't like saying guys pants because it sounds like I'm making guys pants for men. So I'm just gonna call it geese pants, whether or not that's right. Anyway, I purchased the geese pants pattern and it has a pleated front. It looks like a traditional trouser style, but it does have an elasticated back and there's welt pockets on the back and it has a slightly tapered leg. Now for fabrics, I do have a couple of options and I'm not quite sure yet which one I'm gonna do. So if you wanna give me your opinion in the comments, I would love to hear from you. I have two different colors of Robert Kaufman Ventana Twill. I can't remember where I bought these. I might have got them from different shops at different times, but it's the same type of fabric. So it's just your classic traditional cotton twill with no stretch. I have um, a classic beige color, and then I have sort of a creamy white color. And I think either one of these would make perfect pants for the office, um, both in a summery neutral color, so I could wear it with lots of different things in my wardrobe. I might even do both of them in the geese pants, but I'm not sure. Um, I'm definitely gonna try out the pattern first and see how I feel about it, and then um, you know make more pairs if I like the pattern. So yeah, I'm not quite sure yet if I should go for the beige or the cream, but definitely one of these is gonna be that pattern. Next up, let's talk shorts. So I have a dire need for shorts in my wardrobe. I think right now I only have two pairs of shorts that actually fit me. And I'm gonna share with you two fabrics that are actually both patterned. But um, this is this video today, it's not an exhaustive list. I think I'll probably end up making like plain shorts out of like remnant pieces as like wearable muslins as I'm trying out new patterns. But ultimately what I'm showing you today is sort of like my end game for what I wanna do for these shorts. So the first pair of shorts I'm gonna share with you is a simplicity pattern. It's 
9549. I think it's from their most recent uh, release. And I actually really like this pattern because it has shorts, pants, and a skirt. And I like all three of those views. But right now I'm just gonna concentrate on the shorts. And I really like how the pattern cover has um, uh, a printed short. I just thought that that would be really cute and comfortable in a flowy fabric and be super, um, and be super nice to wear in hot weather. So I'm going to use this beautiful Atelier Brunette fabric. I can't remember where I got this from. It might have been Style Maker, but I might be wrong. Um, it's this really gorgeous sort of like gold mustardy color. And I think that this color is beautiful. It has wonderful drape, but yellows are really, really tricky for me because I feel like, I don't know, I feel like they're just a very tricky color for me to wear close to my face. So. Um, I decided that for this, I think I have one and a half yards, it would be really nice to use as like a skirt or a pair of shorts or something that's not on my upper body. So I think that this is gonna be perfect for those shorts and I'm really excited to try out that double pocket. I just think it's so fun. And um, I do think I have a lot of tops, um, just plain tops that I could wear with this in my wardrobe. So I'm really looking forward to making that. The next pair of shorts I'm going to talk to you about is the paper cut Tula pattern. I've already made two pairs of the wide leg pants out of this pattern and I know that I love them. So I'm sure I'm going to love the shorts as well, but as of right now, I haven't actually tried the shorts version yet. So um, as I said, with these prints, I'm probably going to make these as my final version and I'll test out the pattern first in a plain fabric that's just like a remnant piece or something. But I want to use this linen that I got from the fabric store in New Zealand. Um, it's a Japanese linen. Oh, it is very, very sheer and thin. Maybe I won't use this. I just realized when I like held it up that it's like completely see-through. All right, scratch that. I'm not going to use these for shorts, but I do think this fabric is beautiful. And I like the idea of using a plaid for the Tula shorts because it's a really, really simple design and it has inseam pockets. So I think it's going to be fairly simple to, to match patterns in that. It's not going to be as hard as other patterns. Um, but yeah, <laughs> All right, I don't really have a plan now for pattern shorts, but if I do come across some plaid in the future that is not as see-through as this, I do think it would make a great pair of Tula shorts. Um, but I am still gonna make the Tula shorts pattern. I will find something to make them in. Now let's talk about rompers. Last year, I made a couple of rompers out of knit fabrics and I would just wear them around the house. I don't really wear them outside of the house, but they are super, super comfortable and they're really nice for really warm days. So I wanna make a few more because as I said, I'm gonna be at home more. So the first one is another one that I'm not quite sure if it's gonna work because of the sheerness of the fabric or but, but I'm gonna try, I think it could work. So I have this linen that I got from Fabric Mart. It's been in my stash for quite a while, probably since like 2018, and I haven't used it yet. Let me see how sheer it is. It's, it's not too bad actually. It's lightweight, but it's not completely see-through. So I don't know yet if this is gonna work for what I was planning on, but I do like the idea of having a stripey romper. And the pattern I was thinking about was the Ready to Sew Jazz pattern. I purchased this pattern last month, I think, and I definitely wanna sew it. There's like 80 different variations. The variation that I was thinking for with this fabric is obviously the romper version, so the shorts. And I wanted to do like the overall style, like the bib, and then it has straps that cross in the back. And then the, the particular version that I printed out, I haven't put the pattern together yet, but I did print it, it has the button front on the bib. And I just think that like a cute little overall romper kind of thing in this stripy linen would be really great. And if I'm just wearing it around the house, um, I think that I could get away with it being if it's like slightly sheer. Um, but I do think this would be really cool and comfortable to wear in the summer. Next up is another new look pattern. It's new look 6291. And does this not look like the most comfortable garment in the history of garments? It's just a very, very simple, elasticated at the chest, elasticated at the waist, and you can do pants, shorts, or um, a skirt, which I actually really like the look of the dress with the high-low hem, but that's for another video. So, and then you can have straps. I definitely would not do strapless because I don't have enough going on up top to keep it up, but you can do tie straps or you can do like a halter neck strap. I would do one of those. I just think that for bumming around the 
house, it would be so comfortable. And you can actually make this out of a knit or a woven. Now I don't have fabric to show you for this because I have some exciting things coming up. So I'm just gonna keep that under wraps for now, but I do have a plan for this particular romper in a certain fabric, and I'll be excited to share more information about that later. If you're enjoying this video so far, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the like button because it helps more people find my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Next up, let's talk overalls. I have been obsessed with overalls lately. Like as Me Made May has been going on, I kind of scroll through the hashtag every once in a while and I've been favoriting all of the things that just speak to me. And I've noticed that I've been favoring it favoriting a lot of overalls. I have one pair of overalls that I made but out of a knit fabric and it's a ponte and I do like those and I wear them at home but for the summertime I think they're going to be a little bit too warm. So I want to make some overalls out of a breathable fabric and I think that they will be so incredibly comfortable and not tight or constricting around the midsection and I think that I will really love wearing them with things like crop tops or you know like tight fitting tanks like the one that's behind me over here and so I definitely want to make a couple pairs of overalls. The first one is a pattern that I just picked up in the most recent McCall sale. It's McCall's 8204. Now when this pattern came out I completely just passed it over. I didn't look at it at all but as I said as I've seen more people making and wearing and styling overalls I really fell in love with this particular style. I know that there's some indie patterns out there that have a very similar style, but I thought I would pick up this pattern because it was on sale for $1.99, and then if I try it out and I don't like it, I haven't invested a lot um, in that particular pattern. So I got that pattern, and I also saw recently that Cezanne has a pair of, well, they call it a jumpsuit, but it's basically the same style of overall. Um, it's slightly different. They have like a button front on the bib, but the overall look is really similar to this McCall's pattern. And so if Cezanne's doing it, then I feel like if I did it, then it's not like lame. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like worried about that. But anyway, certainly it looks very comfortable. So for fabrics, I think I'm gonna use this lightweight denim. This is a four ounce denim that I got from Joanne. Um, it's in a very dark wash color and I do think that it's really it's a nice quality denim It's really breathable. It's not going to be see-through and I think it'll just be so comfortable to wear in the summer So that is definitely on my make list the second pair of overalls that I want to make um, I feel like jumpsuits and overalls are kind of interchangeable I believe it is called the Clyde jumpsuit But to me, I would probably only wear it layered with a top underneath So in my mind, it's more like an overall So the pattern is from Elizabeth Suzanne and it's called the Clyde jumpsuit And I just I've looked up the hashtag on Instagram and I just really like this I like how loose it is. I like the giant pockets again I think it would be a wonderful piece to layer with a tight-fitting tank top um, and I think that I would get a lot of wear out of it in the linen. So I have this linen from the fabric store and I already made a pair of paper cut tulip pants out of it, which I love, but I got quite a bit of this fabric because I knew I would want to make multiple pieces with it. So I think for the rest of this fabric, I'm gonna use that to make that Clyde jumpsuit. Um, the pattern is also really cool because it comes in different lengths. So there's, I believe there's a short, a regular, and a tall. So that's really handy, um, especially for if you for a jumpsuit because you know your, your torso and your leg length it, it's very very important in a jumpsuit so it is really nice that she offers different body lengths like that so the last thing we're going to talk about is skirts now i do have a few elastic waist skirts already in my wardrobe but i wanted to add a few more so i have a couple of skirt patterns I'm going to share with you and then I have three different fabrics that are possibilities for either skirt and I, I have even more choices in my stash um, but these are definitely some ones that I'm thinking about possibly using for skirts. The first one is McCall's 8259. This is a wrap skirt and there's several different views. There's one with a ruffle that I think is really beautiful but for this particular, uh, my, my idea for this, I think I want to do the long maxi skirt version. Although honestly, I might end up making the midi because it'll probably end up being a maxi on me because I'm only four foot nine. Hashtag short people problems, right? Um, but yeah, then I could actually just use the midi and I wouldn't have to worry about shortening the maxi skirt like eight inches or something. I'll have to look at the pattern and see. But I just really like that style of wrap skirt and I think having a really long, um, I would probably make it ankle length wrap skirt would be nice because I think, I feel like when it's longer you have to worry less about it like flying open and the breeze and like showing your goodies. 
So um, yeah, I wanna do a long skirt for that. And then the second pattern is a vintage pattern from 1999, it's McCall's 2255, and it is a very, very simple bias cut slip skirt, but it has elastic in the waist. And I'd, I have some patterns and I've seen a lot of patterns for slip skirts, but they have a side zip and I really wanted something that would add an elastic waist. So this has several different length options. You can do overlays if you're using sheer fabric. I might eventually get to something like that, but for now I'm just gonna do the basic um, slip skirt. And I'll probably do a midi length, I'm thinking for this. Um, I might go down to ankle length. I don't know, I just kind of have to figure out what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And for fabrics, I have these three picked out, but as I said, these are not the only choices. I have others that I could select, but I do think that each of these would make a nice summertime skirt. So this is an Echo Vero fabric from Blackbird Fabrics. I really like the colors in this. It is kind of autumnal looking, but I have never been someone who's attached to like certain colors and certain seasons, mostly because I look better in darker colors to begin with. So I just wear a lot of dark colors no matter what time of year it is. But yeah, I think that this is really pretty and it has a lot of drape, a lot of flow to it. So I think either of those skirts would be really nice in this. My next option is some rayon twill. I'm pretty sure I got this from StyleMaker in their Black Friday sale. It's sort of a rusty orange color and then it has this black sort of animal print. Um, I really, really like this fabric and I've kind of been hoarding it for a little while, like waiting for the perfect pattern. And I think that either the slip skirt or the wrap skirt would re be really nice in this. And I think that this would go really well in my wardrobe. Um, I could wear a variety of different tops with it. And again, it's it, this is actually really nice for a skirt because it's a little bit on the heavier side for being rayon, but it's not super thick. And I think that I would wear this a lot in the summertime with some breezy sandals. Oh, I just, I'm like already looking forward to wearing this. And then finally, I have this Dashwood Studio Rayon that's been in my stash a little bit longer. I think I bought it last year. And this one has a black background, and then it has all of these really pretty um, warm-toned flowers. And again, I think this would look pretty in either skirt. And I do really like printed skirts. Um, I wear a lot of solids, but I do tend to gravitate towards printed skirts because I feel like, sort of like with a dress, it's just an instant outfit. Like you throw on a printed skirt with a very basic solid top and you're out the door and ready to go. So um, I am definitely looking to add a few more skirts to my wardrobe before the summer. So those are the things that I want to make to fill the gaps in my wardrobe. I know that it might seem like a lot, but I am going to genuinely try to make every single one of these things. Um, I, I'm right now I am working on some charity dresses for Project Dress a Girl, but once I finish that, I think I'm gonna focus in on these things and see how many of them I can get finished um, kind of quickly because I know that my mind will drift and something new will come out and I'll, I'll get distracted by newer and shinier things. But I do wanna try to make as many of these things on this list as I can because it is all of these things are a real need in my wardrobe. I need comfortable clothes. I need things that I can wear in the summertime at home. So um, yeah, I'm gonna see how many of these things I can bang out as quickly as possible. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy seeing sewing plans videos, I'm gonna go ahead and link this playlist where you can see all of my plans from the past. Thanks so much for tuning in and I will see you again next time.